There's been a lot of talk recently about a new normal. That is to say, the way we once did things no longer will be the same for many people. The worldwide pandemic could be far worse, many argue, if it weren't for the steps taken by many people. For some, they will be glad when it's just all over and life can get back to normal. But others point out that life will never actually be the way it used to be. They say that the impact of the pandemic will be lasting on businesses and lifestyles, and will change everyone's way of life. And that's likely true. You already are hearing of things you'd probably never would have thought of. McDonald's doing delivery. Churches meeting in their parking lots. Companies like GM still might be in business, but employees have to follow new rules, and even the manufacturing line has been altered to prevent the spread of illness. Certain policies make life miserable, ranging from the very heartbreaking you can't enter the ICU right now, to the less severe, you can't pass around donuts at work anymore. So yes, it's probably true. Life won't be the same as it was before the pandemic. People are tossing around the phrase, a new normal. You just have to get used to the after effects. A new podcast on a major news network is starting up, and it's called The New Normal. Change isn't always bad. But so many of the changes are rather disheartening. We want life to go back to the way it was without a pandemic or the fear that it brings. We want businesses which we frequent and which serve us to run the way they always did. Most of us probably don't want such a new normal and all the changes the pandemic brings. But it's not the end of the story. There's going to be another new normal. One that's going to bring about something wonderful. That's what we consider today as we read the closing verses of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Christ is risen. There's going to be a new normal. One thing that everyone seems to be keen on reporting is the rate of death that the pandemic has in various countries. It seems that everyone is paying attention to how much risk of death is floating around or hidden. There's so much mystery about a new illness, we want to know what our chances are of getting sick and what our chances are of survival if we don't get sick. There's nothing more disruptive to normal life than death. But that's where we all need to step back and take in the sobering, sobering reality of our situation. Things like illness, war, food shortages, overrun hospitals, mass fear, and isolation are all just symptoms of a greater problem. The world is under the curse of sin. Whenever we experience these things, we are made to remember that the curse of sin is actually our normal existence right now. That's what we have by nature. And really, in the end, it doesn't matter what the rate of infection is with any pandemic. The mortality rate for being human is 100%. Everyone is going to die because everyone is covered in guilt and sin. And this is an illness which we could never escape because it's passed on from our parents. We receive it, we live in it, and we die in it. Sin kills, and it does so because the sinner deserves justice from God. Our real problem has always been our sin and the sting it brings, death. We might win occasionally over illness, but we can never devise our own lasting victory over death. But there's a new normal coming. Jesus, the Son of God, was born into this world cursed by sin. He, however, was different from the rest of us. He had no sin. Conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he was without any inherited sin. And as the true Son of God, he committed no sin at all, but lived a perfect and holy life. Yet he died an agonizing death on the cross. He did this not because he deserved it, but for us. And when the payment for sin was complete, he gave up his life. His body was placed in the grave. The scriptures foretold all these events. Jesus had foretold it to his disciples. When the woman came to the tomb on Sunday morning, they did not find the body of Jesus. An angel reported the good news first. Do not be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. 
He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. What those women and Jesus' disciples needed to realize was that there was going to be a new normal. Death was the old way. But because Jesus died and rose again, life would never be the same again. A new normal is promised to come. The Apostle Paul says that change will come suddenly for us. Listen, I tell you a mystery. He doesn't mean something that is confusing. He means something which you would never imagine if someone hadn't told you about it. It is something which God has made known. Far better than any World Health Report or news briefing, it is the Word of God to assure the whole world. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a moment, in the blink of an eye, at the last trumpet. Death, for those who are in Christ, it is just a sleep. We will not remain in death. A new normal is coming. And when it comes, it will be so sudden that Paul says it will be in the blink of an eye. A day is coming when all who have died with faith in Christ Jesus will be changed. Paul says to the believers he writes to, we will all be changed. The change that's coming is this. The dead will be raised imperishable. It will be a new normal. Right now we live in fear of pain, hurt, and decay. We strive against the process of aging and are taken aback every time we face the loss and pain which accompanies death. But the new normal will be new bodies raised back to life as imperishable bodies. No more hurt, no more decay. We will go on living forever. Time will no longer be marked by aging. Time will no longer cease to matter at the moment of death. We will never age or die. Paul gives the picture of putting on the new normal, the same way that one puts on a garment. Our perishable bodies will be putting on the new imperishable self. Right now, we put on personal protective equipment like face masks. At the sounding of the last trumpet and the return of Christ, we will put on new bodies. And we will never need any personal protective equipment because those new bodies will never perish. When all this happens, the new normal will have begun. The prophecy in scripture will be fulfilled in which death gets swallowed up. Isn't that a comforting picture? The very idea that death would be conquered and devoured by life. When those women left the tomb the first Sunday which celebrated the resurrection, they had to know that a new normal was on its way. They left in a hurry, filled with fear and joy. What would life be like now that Jesus was alive again? What would it mean for them? They weren't exactly sure, but it did bring them joy mixed with that uncertainty. The Apostle Paul writes to remove all uncertainty about what the new normal involves for those who live in resurrection joy. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will all be changed. Jesus' resurrection was the first great change. His body, restored to life, is now a glorious body and lives forever. We too will leave the sleep of death and will put on the garment of immortality. These perishable bodies will be clothed with the imperishable. We will see the new normal begin as death is finally devoured up by life forever. There's a new normal coming. But it's not one that's surrounded by new limitations and fears. It's not a new normal in a fight against death. It is a new normal in a victory over death. And that new normal is the victory which is ours through Jesus Christ, the living one. When the woman left the tomb, they saw the risen Jesus. It says they fell down and worshipped him. Don't be afraid, he told them. And can't you just picture him saying, there's going to be a new normal. A new normal without fear and without death. That's something to talk about. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen.